Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to tonight's edition of Beyond the Ordinary Show. And y'all, we're in for an amazing call today with Phyllis Douglas. She's new to BTO, but the second I felt her energy and then we dropped into a conversation and what she was bringing through was so up my alley and so what I feel is and what we're all amplifying it in ways and we're being asked to really expand that and what it takes to expand that and the support that we have and we're going to be talking today about that and so much more and accessing the inner Christing effect this is going to be an amazing conversation we'll open up to Q&A a little bit later Phyllis is also probably going to activate us with well she's known as the voice of the angel so she works alongside the Elohim and she's known as Vox Angelus, and I'm sure you'll you'll correct me if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Uh, but Phyllis transmits a high, heavenly sound signature of sacred design and creation through her voice, and you really have to experience it. And we're going to get into some of that today. It's going to be a profound call. I want you to hear some of Phyllis's story. I want you to feel into how she's activating that Christing effect within you. And we'll just we're just gonna share so much on today's call um on this deepening of what I feel tremendously of a calling of the Elohim, the great white brotherhood, the Christ and energy. It's just this is just again so my wheelhouse study. I'm so excited. Phyllis, welcome to the show. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here with you. Mm. So Phyllis, let's start. Let's give everybody a little bit of background into your story how did this voice of the angel start coming through you and and what put you in a place that you said i have to share this with more people i know that this is activating others it was more so i was told i was going to share it with uh, people even better <laughs> <laughs> i just to go back a little bit all the way back to when i was four years old you know, i have always been surrounded by angels ever since I was a little girl. And I remember at four years old, recognizing that they were angels, only because I had started Sunday school. And I had um, I'd been given like a, a Bible. And I was looking through at the photographs, and they had one with angels, you know, biblical angel with the robes and the wings and so forth. And I went, Oh, my goodness, they're angels. And that's how they had actually been appearing to me. So the angels have always been my, my guides, my teachers, uh, my protectors, my guardians in that sense. And so all of my training and so forth has actually come through Elohim in addition to things that I've been guided uh, to. But I've always sung. So ever since I was a little girl, I was speaking light language, but I didn't know it to be I, called light language. Phyllis, can I stop you for just a second? A lot of people yeah. are saying that the that the your sound is really low. I can hear you, but um a lot of people participants are saying that so maybe we can increase your volume just a little bit. I apologize. That's okay. Is that better? It's better for me. Y'all give me a thumbs up if that's better yeah, if it's still that, too low. Is that better? Yes. I, okay. I'm hearing yes. All right. Wonderful. Okay. Sorry about that. And they're saying just a bit. Can you turn up just a little bit more? A little bit more? Yeah. Or or actually, how about 25% more? Maybe if I go in here, audio settings, turn it all the way up. Is that better? Yeah, let's go there. Okay. Perfect. Okay, got a yes there. Yeah, so basically I've been surrounded by angels since I was a little girl. And they have been giving me experiences and so forth as I was growing up. And at one point, you know, I've always sung, I've always used my voice. And at one point, they were saying, well, you're going to sing, you know, I was in a session. And they said, you're going to sing to your client. And I had never done that before. This is a spiritual energy. It's affecting my electronics. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I figured all stuff. 
And that's what they, that's what yeah. they just told me. Uh, so they said, you're going to sing to your clients. And so I, I leaned down to my client and I said, well, apparently I'm going to sing. And they're like, okay. So I sang to them in the session and they said that that was really one of the best sessions that they had ever had as far as feeling and sensing the energy and feeling it flow through their body. And so that's really how that had begun working with clients. But I had also done sound healing and sound therapy work. And it was working with singing bowls and gongs and so forth at the time. And then I began to kind of sing and tone when I was doing the sound healing work as well. Then I was just told to kind of drop that and just use my voice. Yeah. And that's really how it began. And, you know, you go through that period of time and it's kind of like, well, where is this coming from? <laughs> right. And, and so, you know, the angels kind of had informed me. It, it shifted from angels to Elohim because Elohim is actually a collective of which the angels belong mm -hmm. in the angelic realms. And so I am a direct and embodied conduit for the consciousness of Elohim. And so they call these like the highest heavenly signatures, the sound signatures of signatures of uh, sacred design and creation that come through. And it works with us because we are energetic beings. And so it's really working with our frequency. And at one point they said, well, we really want you to understand how this works. And so they took me out of body, went above the earth, out into the cosmos, and they told me to look down. Oh. And when I looked down at earth, I saw just these streams of beautiful light. They were different colors and they streamed from the earth and just went up into the cosmos just indefinitely. And they said, that is what you look like to us. And so we were just these streams of, of light. And so they were talking about in the work that we operate like, like a finely tuned orchestra playing this beautiful composition of music. And when we have a distortion or like, like a, an instrument or an organ, <laughs> like an internal organ is out of tune, then the frequency is off. And it's really about maintaining our frequency and elevating our frequency, but in a balanced way. So they were kind of showing me how they work and recognize our frequency and then how my work is affecting your frequency to elevate humanity up to a higher octave of awareness and being or soul consciousness. How do you discover that this is taking place with people that you're having sessions with and leading through workshops and or are, are listening to your downloads? I can actually, well, if I am in person or even remotely, as long as I can see people, I can feel and sense what is happening. And when I am singing, I am become, it's like the sound comes to me and I become the sound. Mm. So that is what I consider like the embodiment. That sound is radiating outwards. And along with the sound, it serves as a carrier for what they call the, um, the sacred constructs of creation. And so it's sacred geometrics. So if I tune into any form, I can see these, the, the sacred geometric constructs that make up who or what it is that you are. So as I'm singing, I can see the frequencies that are attuning and altering and change, make, you know, making changes, transforming these, these sacred geometric constructs. And so I can visually see the things that are happening. And 
I can sense that as well. So in my music or in the recordings, it is all frequency encoded. All the frequencies that come through are encoded within the transmission. So people will receive that whenever they're listening to it. Okay, I, I have to redirect a little bit and we're going to get into the Christing effect and the importance of it and, and what that actually means. I, I, I think I've done this once in 11 years. I've just stopped the conversation. I am feeling such a profound energy moving through my throat right now. And I know it's because we're on this call together. It's, I know 100%. What's happening, Phyllis? This is part of the Christing effect. <laughs> and I'm sorry, it's, it's also part of my, the other day I went through an extraordinary spiritual thing and I've been working on, as many people have, is releasing all of the old things that are not in alignment with who it is that we're becoming. And so what Elohim told me was, you've come online. Mm. And life has been quite extraordinary and chaotic and just everything in between <laughs> um, since then. Because I'm getting used to operating at a higher octave mm. or vibration. And there's just a lot of, lot of energy moving through. So right now, um, I can feel Elohim is here. I, oh, my yeah. room is full. The angels are here. <laughs> um, you've got angels standing behind you as well. And you have a guide that's standing behind you. Most people that are listening to this call are going to have a guide or a holy guardian angel that is going to be with them during this. And often Elohim takes these moments because it's like we got her she's in a position to make a difference there's people here and we can make a difference through her me myself for these people for those who have ears to hear let mm. them hear yeah well first of all i said that exact phrase to someone about an hour and a half ago um <laughs> <laughs> which is it's not something i use every day and they're they're not screwing around i can feel their presence i can feel what's moving through and it's it is it is without question that there's something profound being activated right now and, and, and i typically don't do, i typically don't do that on calls like this just call out what's happening through me but this is unmistakable um, I'll breathe into this experience as we go through the conversation. If y'all are feeling anything, uh, if you're listening on the other side, feel free to type in your experiences. We'll get into Q&A a little bit later. Let's get into the Christing effect as this is transmitting and working us as well. T tell us, yeah. first of all, if you'll give us a breakdown, again, a little deeper awareness of the Elohim for anybody that's listening who may not be familiar. And then let's get into the Christing effect that's taking place as well. Okay, Elohim is actually a, a collective. And so if you view it like an umbrella, at the top of the umbrella is God, like intelligent source, creator, whatever you'd like to call it. And then below that, within like a hierarchy within the uh, Elohim, you have uh, the, and the angels, right? You have the archangels and the angels. And then you have also the architects. And many people know them as creator gods. And I am a creator god in physical form. I was a creator god. So there's a lot that's all of a sudden coming in because I am here today, like for mm -hmm. you to hear. And so basically, Elohim are the avatars for God, the messengers, the avatars, the creators for God's will. Does that make sense? It does. It okay. does. Y'all feel, take a deep breath with me. A lot of y'all are writing in that your throat is heavy, feeling it as well, yeah. your presence, feeling emotional also. I'm already working with you. Elohim's already working with you through me. And they understand that the people that are on this call were called by what the, the call was about. Mm -hmm. So they're already working with you. And I can feel that, that energy coming through. So you may then feel things in your body, one throat, 
um, not speaking your truth. That's a simple one. But also you'll feel areas in your physical body where you have been holding emotions, trapped emotions, mm -hmm. tension, where you might have had um, injuries and so forth. But it's mostly past trauma. Yeah. Wow. So Christed. Yes, sorry. The okay, so the Christing, I was having a discussion with Elohim because I was raised religiously and I was talking to a friend of mine who I'm not sure if she's still a friend or not. She is very um, evangelical, which mm. nothing wrong with that, right? But we were having a discussion and she was talking about awaiting the second coming of Christ. And then later I had this this conversation. And they're like, there is no second coming of Christ in a physical form. The second coming of Christ is the, the arising of Christ consciousness within each individual, which permeates the veil and begins to open us up to a remembering of who it is that we are. We are missing nothing. We need nothing external everything is within us so everything that we tap into externally is really creating like a doorway um, or an access point for us to retrieve what it is that we already know right and so that's what the christing is it is our awakening to the truth of who we are and the christing is our ascension the process of our ascension within a physical form. And it literally is, if you look back at like the old Baroque paintings and you see a halo, mm -hmm. it's about becoming our luminous form. And we have to activate both the pineal gland, the mouth of God at the base of the skull, there's the causal chakra that is kind of off the back of the head. There's the crown chakra. There's the third eye. And there's the amygdala. So when we are fully activated into Christ consciousness, our halo activates. And that is the full Christing. Beautiful. How can someone listening or listening to the replay become more conscious of the Christ thing that is taking place with them and 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 fluctuate in a way that they can become more in harmony with that frequency. It's really about going inward and people hate hearing that. <laughs> they just hate hearing that. So meditation, right? Now when I say meditation, there can be negative and connotations to that. Meditation is a broad spectrum. So when we say meditation, we are talking about communion with your God force, the God force within and the God force without. So you want to be in communion with that. So it's not really about asking and receiving questions or anything like that, or really it's about, it's like you drive a car and you have to fill it with gasoline, right? It's the same thing. We are in this physical vehicle and in order to keep progressing, driving forward, we have to fuel ourselves with light. So when we sit in communion with God, that is what we were doing. When we fuel ourselves with light, we start to expand our energetic capacity because we are releasing, we're revealing and releasing everything within us that is from the past. And we have to let go of those old beliefs, those old paradigms, the old contracts, everything old. We have to let go of that and begin to understand, acknowledge, and reside within our own spiritual truth. Mm -hmm. 
when we began to do that, we we're emptying out the vessel of all of that baggage and it creates more space for our light. That's the whole becoming, we become radiant and that's what is meant by becoming a luminous being. I love this and I love the emptying out so our cup can fill. And when you talk to become more aware of our spiritual truth, there's an interpretation by some that that means that we're living in Shangri-La, that, that all my problems disappear along with my past. But I love your perspective of what happens when that awakens more within us. It doesn't really, it doesn't, erase our past it detaches our attention to it nice. because right now the past doesn't exist in the future it only exists here because we we're carrying it we're carrying emotions and trauma or whatever you know from past circumstances old beliefs when we can just let that go and we no longer entertain it it's, it's no longer a distraction. Mm -hmm. well, one thing that I greatly appreciate about the work that you did, and y'all, we're going to get into vocal alchemy transmission with the Elohim a little bit later. And just, y'all just start preparing for, I, actually, I think they're preparing us for it. So let me take that back. Uh, yes, th that's absolutely amazing. What I am finding more and more, again, I've been hosting this show 11 years now. And I'm finding that people who've been listening to the show for a long time, some of them are showing up as like some of our featured presenters and how I'm resonating with the work, what's coming through is so profound. And it's like those people have been activating, have been awakening, have been awakening their Christ id self within them and, and their capacity to, to be and to give from that overflowing cup has been tremendous. You have I know you've been in community with a very dear friend. He's been on the show, um, a channel for the Elohim, a seal talk cell as well. Yes. And I just, I, it, and what I really want to say about that is that there's those that have been activating others, but it's not so that we can have this hierarchy of what's happening. We're all calling each other up and we're all creating, uh, I'll call it a more purified harmonic together. And as we rise and pop, what becomes possible for one person be becomes possible for many when we hold it in the integrity that you feel Phyllis holding in the way that I know Asil holds it in the way that I believe that I'm holding it as well. And there's something about attuning to one another in that that has such a tremendous ripple effect. It is. It's... Um... What yes. Okay. So they do want to share that when you go and you do all of these trainings, you get certifications, you get degrees and all of that. That is just information. We are not meant to hold on to that and to strictly make it our own those are like keys to open up the next door for ourselves those are points of access that have been created so that we can move forward to become who it is that we are truly meant to be and to allow our own gifts to to come online and expand so that we can be of service to the world so Elohim early on was telling me, you don't need to take any more classes. You don't mm. need any more information. What you're doing is you're putting yourself into a box, right? And you're not, you're, you're in, that's a different level of consciousness. So we're to take those tools that we resonate with because the reason we resonate with them is because it's, it's creating our next access point. Mm it's creating, it's allowing like a memory to come forward. And so I see so many people that get stuck in a box. You know, they learn Reiki, they learn how to do Reiki, they do Reiki in the way that they learned it. And then they don't go outside of that. But we're never meant to stay within a system or an institution. 
Does that make sense? Oh, it makes a lot of sense. And, and again, the reason I shared this awareness of how, again, we're having each other pop is that all of y'all listening, listen to the replays, tuning into these shows. It's like, we're all guiding each other back home where it's, it's possible for, it's not possible. We're making it happen. We're making it happen. And for some, it's, it seems to be happening sooner than for others, but it's, it's, I love calling it a technology because it's a technology that, that we've been waiting for that is here. Again, the second coming, like Phyllis said earlier, it's, it's, it's us activating individually and collectively. That That's it's exactly not, it. Yeah. It is. It's, it's a, it's an inner spiritual technology huh. that we came into this life with. And then there are certain things that we entertain within our life that begin to activate that huh. within us. So Phyllis, what's the main catalyst for your spiritual and healing work? The main catalyst, I guess I would say, is really my mission. Um, as I said, I am of Elohim. Within the collective, I'm known as Enid Astaria. And it was requested that I come into this physical life and do what it is that I'm doing. So the main mission is to basically help people to open to the understanding that they are God within physical form, mm. that they are the creators of their life. And as a collective, we are the creators of our world. And all of the circumstance, we see people's interchain on a daily basis. Mm. I want to start opening up to Q&A here in a little bit. So I've got a couple of questions, but as those questions come up, if you all want to raise your hands to ask a personal question or type a question into the chat box, we'll start taking those here in just a little bit. And of course, we have to go through the special offer, which would, with what Phyllis is offering, it's, it's, it's just going to be amazing what you receive going through these transmissions. Do the Elohim share with you? How can I put this? The direction in which humanity is going is is there a vision for what is there i have a very clear vision of what i receive is is occurring and activating uh, but, but i'm i'm curious what is shared with you if anything i can acknowledge things that are happening or going to happening are going to happen based upon assignments that I receive from Elohim. Mm. So having to do a lot of transmission work um, that's not like done in public. I do a lot of that work as well. And earlier on in my questioning, I was shown that we have, there's, so we have the present moment. The future doesn't exist. It's just unlimited potentiality. Mm -hmm. The past doesn't exist either because it's past, right? And so we are in resonance with what it is. It's, we're like a magnet. We're magnetizing more of what is occurring. Right? Yes. So I've seen a couple different outcomes. I've seen different Earths obliterated, <laughs> Not <just> obliterated, <laughs> and I've I've seen the Earth. Now we have. There's two choices. There's the obliterated Earth, and there is where we are now, and we're not in a space of being obliterated. The light has won. I will offer you that. The light is I, I, winning. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so eventually I do see a very bright future for humanity and the world. But the challenge is the in-between period of time. Mm -hmm. Because we, we have to hit, we'll just call it darkness. I don't really know what to call it. The darkness has to hit the bottom of the barrel 
before it starts rising up. So it's still being drawn down, down, down. It's being driven down. So uh. the light is already winning, but it's a progression because you have people that have shifted more into the light and consciousness, and then you have those that are not. And that has a lot to do with power and greed and money, you know, and, and all of that and, and control. But think about how long all of that has been in place. And it has to be dismantled and disassembled piece by piece. Yeah. And it's being disassembled, y'all, because of what you're choosing to carry in the light. So in essence, the work that I've been doing and going into we're becoming the purification and, and we're also holding, if you will, a force field of we're choosing to interact with. And if, if I'll call it an entity, a denser energy, I'm calling an entity, not like this demon that's going to go out to get you, but the energy of an entity in limiting thought form and lower vibrational harmonic approaches you once you're active you're we're holding a pure space where if it gets so close to us it has to be transmuted into light i believe that's part of what that crisis effect is as well it can't pass through us in the way that it used to be able to we have done so much of the beautiful work and there's still more to do and we get to carry even more crystalline purification within ourselves but as that keeps increasing, that density has to face itself. It has to face its own karma. It has to go through that this through that retribution. And it's unavoidable. It's it's part of the evolution of the collective. But what I feel, Phyllis, and, and I love your perspective on this, is that we are creating the earth. We are creating the space. There can be two worlds living in the same world as far as consciousness um and the more y'all you know, that we hold that higher harmonic the, and play with that symphony with the angelics with the elohim with the seraphims with the ascended masters with the christ consciousness um the faster that the rest of humanity will be able to hold that harmonic and so much more and again it's because of y'all it's because of our shows it's because of what we're choosing it's because that we're choosing to be love in a very intentional and pure way that that has been made possible. Yeah, we are meant to be of service. We all have these gifts that we came into this incarnation with that have come in and expanded, you know, different times. And they're just like, the time is now. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Like this stuff. It's, it's really, I feel this escalation that is happening. And I'm kind of like, ah, uh, a lot of people are. But it's really about being of service to others. First and foremost, it's leading by example. If you walk in light, people will notice and they will desire that. Right? Mm -hmm. And it's also sharing uh, healing technologies, methodologies, and so forth. First, with the understanding that you are not responsible for healing someone. You are not healing them. You, you are creating a, the perfect balanced circumstances or even the energies that are needed by them to heal themselves. So I like to think that I'm facilitating healing work in all that I do, but I love the... Um, Elohim had given me the term, you're creating access points, mm. so creating openings, doorways that people can walk through. In some circumstances like today, it's a, it's a gateway. Mm. <laughs> I can feel it and feel the energy. Yeah. You say that and my throat became active again. It's like, wait, hold on a second. What's happening? Amazing. Well, they, they, they just apologize. Um, there's so much energy that's coming through and they're not technolo technologically inclined to help in any other way. So. <laughs> I love that. What I also appreciate it because it's, and again, in 11 years of doing this show and guiding people in the way that I do, um, 
it, it hasn't been until the last six months that I said it's the time now. It's just it, the time is now, and I feel it so strongly. When you say the time is now, and the Elohim say the time is now, what's their what's their what's their push for us? And I can't. I don't really want to call it a push, but what's the what's the inspiration for them for them sharing that? Our social, our social and political things that are going on. And I know that everyone can see an escalation that's happening in just all areas of the world, right? And there's a reason for that. There is a quickening process. Mm -hmm. So for those of us who are, I don't even like this term, but those of us that are light workers, right? Uh, we're kind of coming online, as I said, it was brought online the other day, because we're bringing light, we are bringing the force of light. You can equate it to a war, mm. that we're fighting a war. And our armor and our instrument to win this fight is light, mm. love. Right? And so we need, they need, we're, there's this escalation and I can feel it coming to a peak and coming, it's like a pressure cooker. Uh -huh. You can feel this pressure building up, especially in the collective. And so Elohim is stating it's, it's time to go, it's time to wake up, it's time okay. to get out there and start doing the work at the highest level possible. And also the more that you begin to do the work, the more elevated it becomes, right? So don't sit back saying, I can't do something um, because you can. Yeah. But so we need to be, we need to be out there doing this work and bringing more light, right? Well, we can't deny ourselves anymore. And that's, that's just the truth. No. We just can't deny ourselves. So y'all, I'm, I'm speaking to all of you. Yeah, you cannot deny yourself. You can't run away from yourself um why would you want to and I, I believe that's truly the invitation why would you want to run away from the light the love the expansion the, the this rainbow that and this harmonic the symphony that you are in the world it's absolutely amazing um phyllis i want to get into some q a uh with the audience i know we need we need to do a vocal alchemy transmission of the elohim yes we and, do <laughs> and, and i kind of want to do that right now but then i don't want to do that and get into a special offer because that seems a little sacrilegious even though it's not um so i'm like i'm gonna do everything at once but let's take a couple of calls we'll get into a special offer we'll do the vocal alchemy transmission depending where we end up in that depending on how much we've been blasted open we may take some more q a as well so um Chris, put the link for the special offer in the chat box so people can start opening that. And while that's happening, Vanessa, let's take you as our first caller. Hello. So, uh, yeah, thank you so much for taking my call. And it's so true. I've just discovered the show recently. And it was like, I've always been on a spiritual journey. And now I'm hopping open for a different level, different areas. And one of that was actually, so I was in a meditation and from my heart, I projected my consciousness into the galaxy. And then I felt an angel coming or like, it, it felt like an angel being, angelic being. And I felt wings hugging me. Like I was surrounded in love and it was the image of wings around me. Um, and I had never had that before. So I was wondering if you could shine some light on what was happening there and what was the purpose and who was that? What you what are, you are. What it was. <laughs> it, it was an angel. Right? And angels actually don't have wings. They have an energetic construct. Their energy is so luminous. Yeah broad it's, a, it's like a light construct behind them that it looks like wings so when people had yeah. seen them they said oh it looks like wings right and that's when they started to actually appear in the biblical form with wings because we understood by definition that is what an angel 
looks like. It's the same for the archangels, you know, the images that we have and so forth. They don't really look like that. Uh, but it was an angel. So the angels are always coming forward at times that you need to have a little bit of inspiration, a little bit of acknowledgement into what truly exists to feel the yeah. essence of that because it keeps you going yeah like, i want more of that right yeah and that's really yeah. all that it was yeah. yeah he had a message for me that he was with me quite a while and in in a different form that i wouldn't recognize as angelic because i was never religious right and then it was like oh okay this is new <laughs> but it was beautiful it just felt like hugged in love basically that's beautiful and they, can, <laughs> they will appear in human form and so forth yeah. oh thank you yeah. yeah have fun building that relationship vanessa being an intimacy inviting it to come in right to it uh, meditate with it really amplified if it showed up that profoundly for you it's you it's oh i would venture to tell you that it was always there but maybe something shifted for you that you can have a different experience with it yeah and so deepen into and and build upon it because they want to have a relationship with you and now that you're open to it in this way what else is possible right it's so exciting it's yeah, so definitely yeah. thank you thank you Blessings, Vanessa. it's Phyllis, we're going to get into special offer in a second. I want to take another caller, but before we do that, if Vanessa or anybody were to dive into the special offer, and y'all, we're going to get into the description of that in a little bit, would that also help to attune, maybe amplify the signal that we have with our guides in that way um, so that there's a, a strong possibility of a clearer connection when we tune in? Well, yeah, several of the transmissions there are really more about clearing and attuning. And then one of them is, is the first of the Christing activations that you can listen to as many times as you want. And that is really about opening expansion and so mm -hmm. forth and being able to elevate to a higher capacity. So that is, that is in there. So it's, it's all of the above, but really it's about opening up and releasing and filling the cup. Mm, beautiful. When you were doing this and expanding the Christ energy, I can feel my field just doing this also. It's so cool. It's so yeah. fun. Um, all right, let's go to another caller. We're getting a special offer. We're going to transmission. We'll probably take some more calls. Yeah, we're going to get, we're going to be in such an amazing flow here. Mary B. Welcome to the call. Hello, darling. Hello, love. What's your question for Phyllis? Well, uh, this is just, I, I I'm, don't even know if I have the right question other than what I'm getting in listening and feeling what, sh what you're saying, Phyllis, is exactly where I've been moving into um, over the last year since my husband passed away learning that this is what I've been waiting for. This is what mm. I've been um, feeling and and understanding and the just hearing you put it the way you put it, everything was kind of just clicking in such a way that I I feel like I'm here because I'm I'm really meant to be here now to shine the light and go in a direction that um, is allowing me to grow. I'm not even saying what I want to say, but. <sighs> I'm smiling because I think you're you're answering your own question, not really asking a question. <laughs> yeah, I was noticing that. I tend to do that <laughs> lately. <laughs> well, so I, said, I don't know that I have a question, but. No, you, you, you did have a question, but your soul has a question. And what I want to let you know is that your husband is actually there with you. And acknowledging from the other side, he's helping you from the other side. But it is like, I am here and everything that you've thought, everything that you've said, everything that you've been in alignment with 
is true. Mm. And he's just really wanting you to know that. And the energy that's yeah. kind of coming in is you're now being able to open up to that truth. And when we start to open up to the truth, everything that the old beliefs that aren't aligned with that start to fall away because we can't keep ownership of things that are, you know, in friction. Yes. Yes. So true. I do know he's here. I, I feel him. And John, you've told me this many times. Um, He's walking me in a way that we weren't even able to walk together while he was here. And that is allowing me to grow in such a way that um, every day I feel like I'm just learning or remembering that which I know to be true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're right on. It is all about remembrance. We know everything. We have everything we need. It doesn't go away, but no. there are experiences that we have in life that are working with us to open up those pathways, right? Yes. And to reveal what it is that we already know. Yes. Yes. Right, Mary, beautiful. It's Thank lovely. you. Thank you for Thank being you. here. Yeah. Thank you always. All right, y'all. We're going to get into more a little bit we're going to do a vocal transmission in just a few minutes but i want to get into the special offer y'all because it's this is full this these transmissions just feel them when you open the page click on the special offer link it's in the chat box um if you can't find the link for whatever reason um uh, just open up a new browser and type in beyond the ordinary show.com forward slash phyllis 33 and then I'll open up that same page. Um, and Phyllis, if you would guide everybody what they're going to receive for $97, y'all, this is a ridiculous price, these transmissions. Um, well, the first thing um, is the Christing Initiations is a, like a new course that I am doing. And I don't, I say course, it's not really a course in that sense, but it is a series of the vocal alchemy transmissions with Elohim, their activations, initiations, and they come with an alchemy symbol that you utilize with the transmission. So I'm offering the first of what they're calling the Christing Chronicles. And that then is, it's what they're, what they call the first gateway of the Christing Initiation Series. And so that's beginning to open up and work with you on a cellular DNA level. And then uh, there's a couple of other, there's the pineal uh, gland transmission, the act purification transmission that I'm doing. And that one also comes with a symbol and you can listen to that and it begins to help decalcify and clear and elevate the pineal gland. So it's not just the pineal gland because as the pineal gland expand, it opens and kind of expands. And they're giving me the image of it, it puffs out, it kind of puffs up a little bit. Mm. That starts to activate your halo, right? When the pineal gland is fully and completely online, that will also help open up your intuition, bring forward your in, your intuitive gifts and your spiritual gifts and so forth. And the deep dive vision quest is literally, it's like a vision quest, a, a shamanic journey. And there's a symbol that covers all of the frequencies of the sacred, uh, I call them sacred ceremonial medicinals and like ayahuasca, mushrooms and uh, cannabis and so forth. And so the frequency of that is within the symbol and whatever is in alignment with you, it will work within your system without any type of ill effect, right? And so that is taking you on a vision quest and you hold an intention at the beginning to receive an answer 
or healing or whatever it is um, that you desire. The call to our cosmic brothers solar activation that is about trans transformation and spiritual transfiguration as well. And it's about answering that that call within. Do you hear that thing about like that small still voice, the voice of God within you? You're answering that call to come forward and be of service and share your gifts. And so that is helping bring all of that forward for you. And then I think the last one's the infinite heart activation. And that's an alchemical induction and initiation. The first and foremost is it's a heart opener. Right? And so we have to open our heart and we have to begin to be able to feel and express love. Oh. And not the love as defined in the dictionary, right? It is the unconditional love and creative essence or force of expression of God. And so this one helps to align you with your divine blueprint. And that's really the gifts. Why did you come into this lifetime? What is the purpose? What are your gifts? It's helping you to align with that true aspect of who it is that you are. Wow, this is an amazing offer, Phyllis. I can feel each one of those transmissions without even opening up the page. All if, if if you're following along, I bet you you're probably feeling something similar to what I'm feeling. If you haven't opened the page, I highly recommend that you do at least get the activation from seeing the page. Um, you know, this is ninety seven dollars. There's a two payment option on it. There's a thirty day money back guarantee. It's a no brainer. Um, tap into it. And if you're no, after listening to a couple of these, just send an email and ask for a refund. I, I don't think that you will. Um, and I think the benefit that you receive from this is going to be far more than a couple of meals um, of what that would buy you. But it's, this is truly just, again, it's so in my wheelhouse and so activating. It. And the truth of what I feel is igniting in all of us in this calling back home, this calling back to our Christed self. And then how we can serve from there. Amazing. Um, the links in the chat box, y'all. Click on the link. Click the buy now button. Super easy to check out. You start getting the downloads right away. Um, and if you get to the bottom of it, you'll also see on here, um, it talks about Phyllis Douglas, Vox Angelus. Uh, there's a reason why they call her the voice of the angel. And Phyllis, whenever you're ready, I'd love to get into the vocal transmission because I, I cannot wait to highlight that anymore on, on tonight's call. I would too. I feel like I feel that pressure cooker effect. <laughs> like, mm. It's time. All right. So what I would suggest to people and I will do. Okay. So I would suggest for each of you to just sit back and close your eyes and relax. Take a deep breath in and out. And on each exhale, just letting go, letting go of any expectations about what this is, how it is to serve you, because it's intelligent and it will serve you in the way that is needed, most needed and the best for you in this moment. And it's also something that you can listen to as many times as you desire and to receive.
a cura hunda ka ishu, a cura papa papa ka chindo, a tua chungera cura, a papa papa e ora tambutra. Transmission is complete. So, Bhagavad Gita, you two sutram. We want you to understand the truth of who it is that you are. In essence, you are avatars of God within physical form. As God works as and through you to experience a physical life. You must understand the true and immense power which resides within you. This is the creative God force. It is your it is your birthright, it is you. It is time to step up and out of the shell, this husk in of human form. It is but an instrument for the true essence of who it is that you are to express itself into the world. Thank you. Holy. 
Phyllis. Thank you so much. <laughs> Holy Phyllis. <laughs> Holy Phyllis. <laughs> wow. Oh, my heart. Yes, magnificent. Wow. Yes. What was your perception of what was being transmitted during that, Phyllis? Part of it was an awakening of not just the, not the throat, well, the throat chakra, but, and I don't even use the word chakra, I use energy centers for many reasons, but so the throat, the energetic center of the throat. So the corresponding energy centers that need to be opened or to have clear passage for us to speak. It's not just opening the throat and then magically you can speak your truth and do whatever, right? You have to have other things in alignment, right? I know that's funny the way I said it. But. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we need to, in order to come into full capacity, we are bringing into alignment all of our constructs or aspects, physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, energetic, right? And so it was working on opening that up, but I felt all of this was happening. If, if you're watching or you watch in the video, you'll see me doing things. And I was doing like this throat opening, clearing thing. Oh. It's not just our physical speech. It is the, the voice of God that comes through. At the base of the spine, or no, excuse me, at the base of the skull is what's called the the mouth of God or the zeal chakra I've heard. I don't even know where that comes from, but it's, it's the mouth of God and it's, for, it's technically where God speaks. So when God is speaking, you open your mouth. It is right at, basically at the back of the throat, right? You open your mouth, comes through. So it was really about opening and attuning the mouth of God with your own voice within physical expression hmm. does that make sense it does make sense how would you recommend for anybody listening activated by this amazing light that you've brought through through this attunement um that they walk that path in their next step forward and in this awakening that is here for them now as I said before, it's really we have to, humans, right, have to understand that the only human thing about us is the physical form, the oh. humanoid form, right? It is a, a vehicle in order for, for us to express ourselves into the physical world. And so it's about sitting in communion with that essence, that God force that works through, as and through you, is you, right? And coming into contact with that. So I'm gonna give you an easy way to do it. Mm -hmm. I was working with a client and they were like, um, I think I have one. Yeah, no, it's just great. Okay. So it doesn't have the box on the end, but pretend there's like the electrical <laughs> box up there. And so they're like, well, humans, you have like a smartphone, right? So you envision what would now be a USB-C, but you know, I have that whole thing. You envision like the little outlet at the top of your head. And then you envision it spiraling upwards and you, you see an, uh, an electrical outlet up there and so visually you see the little the little box plug in and that connects you it just you can try it it fully connects your energy it feels so silly, uh, silly but it takes you out of your mind right you can't over intellectualize it nothing can get in the way if you can plug in your phone you can plug in this body with god Right. Mm -hmm. And so then you just sit in communion with the electromagnetic and energetic impulses that you receive and you will receive them. Right. Mm -hmm. But as you do that, you're creating more space because you're filling yourself 
with light. And the more that you fill yourself with light, the more that you remember you are light. Mm -hmm. And it's also, you know, it sounds silly, but it's also about moving and breathing and being of service. The more that you move, you also are building more capacity for light because you're moving things through. You're moving light through and you're moving everything through that the light is trying to push out. So movement is key. And that's just like walking, right? Moving the physical vessel. Breathing. Breathing is Kelia pathway, it opens up the pathway for our consciousness to flow through, through an arc, the crystalline matrix within their body is the fascia or the connective tissue. So we do have consciousness and light that flows on that matrix of tissue. And we also have the crystalline aspects of our cellular structures, our pineal gland throughout our body, right? And so the more that you can entertain and dance with the light, the stronger of a partner the light becomes. Mm, beautiful. It's. I'm curious how the Elohim also, because you mentioned it a couple of times, um, and, and I'd love to bring in the awareness from that frequency of what being in communion actually means. It's about not being in communion with something outside of yourself it's really more about being in total in communion and embodiment with your divine aspect your divine essence and in that connection you you are an individuation of god so if you understand that and you are you are feeling that level of con you feel that consciousness within directing you that connection that you have within the physical body is connected to all things so the more that you can embody that the more connected you become to everything else or i should okay i will they're correcting me the more awareness you uh. will have that you are connected to all other things we're shut down for the most part we don't think that we're connected with that tree or that door you know, or, uh -huh. or our cat on a spiritual level but we, we we are and the more that you can tune in and just hold the intention the more that you'll begin to open up and feel as you expand your connection energetically with everything around you i felt the essence of that during your vocal transmission i felt the communion in that it was yes it's there was a stimulus that was entered into my environment but it was an attunement within me that was meeting that stimulus in a different way it wasn't it, it was it was quite profound it's quite profound. And again, how we are the stimulus and the catalyst. When oh. I work, I'm opening up a corridor, a corridor of light. Just it streams down and out through just that through my vocals, there's frequencies, but also I'm emanating. So right now I'm sweating profusely. <laughs> uh, so I'm emanating the energy as well. And so when I'm working with you, it's really about opening up that that channel, because when we open up that channel, simply stated, we're connected. Mm. It's pretty simple. One of the, the angels love to say, um, humans love to muddy up the waters when God has made it expressly simple. Mm. We think we have to have a technique or we need this or that or a tool or a technology or like something. Uh, we need to attain something so that we can expand and grow and develop. But we don't. We need to just open that open up within because everything we need is here. right? Absolutely. So beautiful. Y'all, the link for the special offer is in the chat box. Chris or April, pop it in one more time, please. 
um, just so everybody can find it super easily. It, I want you all to dive into the special offer and get into these transmissions. It's freaking amazing. Of course, we're going to run the replay. Also, it'll be up in a couple of hours at the least. Uh, you can come back and attune to the whole conversation because there's so much that's being transmitted here uh, from the very beginning. Again, I felt physically that something you know, profound was happening around my throat, which I'm sure is happening throughout my whole field. Uh, and then getting back into the bulk of alchemy transmission that came through. How would you suggest after receiving such a powerful attunement, Phyllis, that, um, that we integrate uh, what was offered within us? One is to just really allow yourself to rest. Mm. Right? You don't have to think about what is this doing to me, <laughs> right, type of thing. But it's really about just sitting back and relaxing because it's intelligent. So anything that we try to put in the way, we, we block ourselves. Right? So we want to just relax and be open. Sometimes it also, you know, to do a meditation, to just take a nap. <laughs> a good thing to do is also to take a, a, a salt bath with sodium chloride, right? Because it helps to pull out um, heavier energies and so forth. So since I was filling you up, then you might begin to feel like a release. You might feel energy dissipating and releasing. So a salt bath helps. It also helps to dive back into the transmission because we are layered beings. Often there's layers. So each time you go back, you'll be receiving something new, right? So there's a, there's a process of unfolding that can happen as, as well. And so really it's just about relaxing and not being in your head, dropping into your heart and being in a state of allowance. Mm, beautiful. Y'all get in the state of allowance again. The replay will be up a little bit later. Drop in, really soak this in. And, and I'm not gonna ask a lot more questions because I don't wanna get too much more heady. Um, I want us to drop into our hearts. So as we're finishing up this evening's call, Phyllis, I'd love it if um, if there's anything that you're inspired to share or that the Elohim wants to bring in and or both um, as we close out the energy on this particular call so that everybody can go to their space that they're in right now and, and, and attune again to the harmonics that that are living inside of them. The key thing that people need to do is to trust. You need to trust in what it is that you're hearing and what it is that you're experiencing. So trust, and you must have faith that no matter what it is you're doing, you're doing it right. Mm -hmm. There is no wrong, right? But the key thing is just being who it you know being who it is that you are meant to be and desire to be and disallowing anyone else to tell you who you should be how what it is that you should be doing right just allow yourself to be who it is that you are and to continue to follow your excitement because excitement comes off your, your higher intuition, your, that heart energy, that heart intu the intuitive aspect of your heart follows your excitement, right? And sometimes when we think, oh, I'm, I'm feeling anxiety or fear or something, it's actually excitement. Hmm. So you can change fear easily into excitement because if you think you're feeling, you think, oh, I feel a little anxiety, I feel a little fear, I must be excited, right? <laughs> So I do I do that a lot. That, that actually works. But don't allow anybody to diminish you. Always, always walk in life as your true and authentic self and be who it is that you are meant to be. Mm. Beautiful, beautiful message. Ah, Phyllis, amazing. Thank you for being on here today. Thank you for just everything, just for everything on the call today. Um uh, yeah, so wonderful. I, I'm hoping we can create so much more uh, together. And there'll definitely be invitations from my side to do that. So again, grateful to have you here. 
Thank you for the transmission. Thank, Thank you, you so for sharing much. your life. Thank, Thank you so for much. owning your Christed essence and walking that path and being so aware and inspired by it and being such an embodied presence for what we all are activating at this time. You know, really guided to say it's not easy all of the time, mm -hmm. but it's not easy to stay where you were either. No, definitely so not. Just be brave. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Again, thank you so much. Such a gift. Y'all, thank you for being thank on the call. Everyone. Thank you for adding your energy to tonight's transmission as well. I bow down to each and every one of you in Namaste. And with that, wish you a good night. And I look forward to seeing you on the next call. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody.